my last day of 15 days in Japan. We're looking out at the skyline of Ginza. You can see Cartier in the middle, Mikimoto on the left, Bulgari on the right. And uh, we're staying at the Tokyo uh, Stay Hotel. Uh, today I wanted to just show you the electronics that I brought with me. I usually pack a ton of electronics, but I tried to travel very light this time. Um, so what I've got here is a laptop, an iPad would have just been fine, and actually I probably could have gotten uh, away without needing it all. Um, nice thing about this particular unit, I bought something, this has about a six to nine hour, hour battery life. The charger is very small, it's about iPad sized. And um, it takes an SD card here so I could bring my own movies. And it has a detachable keyboard so I can use it as an iPad or have a full keyboard to type. I also brought a uh, LAN adapter. A, a couple of the hotel rooms we've been in in Japan had LAN and not free Wi-Fi. So that actually can be useful, but you don't really need it. Uh, an important piece is this charging block here. It's got five outlets. Uh, I, between the two of us in our party, we had a lot of things that needed to be charged every night. Um, let me go through these smaller things. So this is a set of noise canceling headphones. It's a very long flight. Flip this little switch here and now you've got noise canceling. It's great for the flight. It really makes you feel relaxed. Um, but of course you can use a regular set of earphones as well. I brought an extra set as backup. I've got a multiple outlet charging cable here so that I could charge pretty much anything I needed to here. Um, one only, only problem is that, that um, I had to actually cut down this one for my iPhone 6 because the case, uh, it was too big for the case. I didn't really need the Apple Watch at all, but I was able to use it occasionally. Uh, the ability to set an alarm was nice in the subway so that I didn't, knew I wasn't going to miss my stop. And you can do that verbally on the uh, Apple Watch. I brought an iPhone 5. This is uh, 5S. This is actually my backup phone. Um, I'm actually filming this on a, on a 6. And that's my main phone. I bought the 6 because I wanted a better camera and all the photos and videos you'll see in this video are from the, the iPhone 6. Uh, the iPhone 5 I brought for a couple reasons. One was the uh, SIM card. So in the United States I bought this SIM over um, Amazon I think and um, you can see where you can get the website. This gave me 4 gigabytes of data for $25. Um, you can get it in smaller amounts too. You can get it in two gigabytes. I think it lasts seven or 14 days. I can't remember. Um, and uh, you don't want to travel without a smartphone. A smartphone is important for, for a whole lot of things. Um, the first thing is it, you're going to be using maps. You're going to be using maps a whole lot all the time, every single day if you're traveling independently. And you need uh, data service. If you don't have data service, then you're not going to have uh, very good luck with the uh, phone. You're always going to be routing where you're going to be heading to and um, I've got another video showing you how you use the, the routing so I won't go through that here. So you're going to be using it for the camera of course. You're going to be using it for a compass and GPS. If you have fine friends or Life360 you're going to be using it for that to keep track of where people are. You're going to be using it for texting. Um, and uh, you're of course going to be using it as a phone, although if you get a card like this, this will not give you actual telephone service, but it instead gives you data only. And so with data you can do texting, you can do maps, and then I've got this cute app called Freedom Pop. Um, you, Freedom Pop is a company you can actually uh, get a SIM card from them for 10 bucks. It's free service if you decline all of their extra features, and then you can use this to call any phone in the world pretty much for free and uh, you don't actually have to have their sim in the card you just uh, use their login information okay another thing I've got here is my selfie stick uh, there are very few places that you cannot use a selfie stick basically in the, the nice museums uh, but the selfie stick came in real handy in a lot of places with my group and you want to get one that has a cord like this I've tried the Bluetooth ones in the past and they, uh, it's, it's always a problem. Do you have the Bluetooth sync? Do you, if their battery is good, etc. So uh, get one with a cord. It makes it so much easier. Um, this one has a nice rubberized grip, but it turns out that rubberized grip is actually a real pain because the grip slips around. So if you can get one without the grip that moves around, that's probably better. And also these, this is the pretty standard model here. It just expands. 
plop your iPhone in here. A couple of problems with this. One is it's not very strong. I've actually broken one of these once. Second is you cannot do it in um, vertical orientation. Um, and third uh, is this unit slides around. It can easily spin. So if you're trying to do it on the side like this, then it's sometimes it's so heavy that you know, the camera will start drooping, especially in heat. So that's something else to think of. But I think this unit was great and it only cost me like 10 bucks. So that's all my electronics that I brought and uh, that's all you need. Uh, I actually brought a backup camera. I did not need that. Uh, my sister-in-law brought a full SLR with a huge lens, almost never used it. So unless you're a professional photographer, I would not bother with that. Uh, the backup, the second phone really isn't necessary, but I used, what I did is I used this phone for my, my SIM card here, the fast Japanese SIM card. The phone I'm filming this on, I use T-Mobile service so I continually had my own phone number and texting. Uh, again, you don't really need to do that, but you're gonna lose, uh, you're gonna lose something if you only have one phone. Uh, it was also nice because I had two phones then. Oh, I also brought a small charging block. Let me grab that. Okay, so this is a small charging block. It's, I think, about two, two and a half amp hours. And this is really all you need. It's enough to charge my phone pretty much once entirely. And uh, you can get larger ones. But uh, it's, And when I was on a bus for all day long, I needed more than this. But it turns out this is another, there's another reason I, I like this unit here. And that is that uh, it's basically the world's biggest battery. Uh, you can turn the unit on, stick in the USB port here, and you can charge stuff all day long off the USB port. It's not as fast as this because this has a, a huge high current, whereas this only puts out 500 milliamps from the USB. But anyways, you definitely need a charging block, you're, no matter whether you're doing a bus tour or a, a, a daily tour, because you're going to be using your camera and smartphone all the time. So do not try to buy one of these in Japan. It costs way more. Um, something like this size might cost you $30, 20 to $30, maybe even $40 in Japan. Um, also, this don't try to buy this in Japan. Buy it in the US. I never found this particular card in Japan. I found a similar one called Freetel, but it was uh, two to three times as much here in Japan. So definitely get these in the United States before you come over. Um, I would recommend you get at least two gigs per week. All right, have fun in Japan, it was a great trip.